Sup YouTube official gaming network and welcome to episode 7 of our Jetpack Joyride Game in Java tutorial. Last episode uh, we created our game loop for our game. This episode uh, we're going to be implementing a, a frames per second and a ticks per second timer. And what that pretty much does is that uh, every second it's going to print out uh, how many frames we have gotten in that second and how many times our game has ticked or updated in that second. Now before I get into this episode, uh, I just need to uh, uh, say some things to you guys. Uh, first of all, uh, I apologise for uh, some background noises uh, there might be, because uh, my house is a little loud at the moment. And uh, if you're wondering why the audio quality is bad, it's because uh, I don't have uh, my headphones with my mic with me at the moment. Uh, I left it at my dad's house, and right now, as of recording this, I'm at my mum's house. So, uh... And uh, don't expect a Mario tutorial tomorrow, and uh, I'll make a vlog tomorrow discussing this. And uh, the reason why this video is uh, one day late is because uh, I, I really just didn't have time. I was uh, really busy yesterday. Alright, so now uh, we're going to go get into this episode. Uh, in our uh, run method, uh, we're going to create something called a long. Now, uh, what a long is, it's pretty much uh, like an integer. It would hold... It's like a, it has an integer value, but the thing is, the value of an integer can go can only go up to a certain amount of digits. But a long has twice the memory of an integer, so longs can have twice as many digits as uh, integers. So yeah, uh, we're going to create two longs. Our uh, first one will be uh, inside of our run method. We're going to create a long. We're going to call it last time, and we're going to set it equal to, we're not actually going to type this out, we're going to set it uh, equal to system dot nano time. And what this pretty much does is that uh, it gets the current time in nanoseconds. And uh, we're using uh, nanoseconds for this instead of uh, milliseconds because if we try to use uh, milliseconds for this last time long, then what we'll be trying to do with it uh, won't work because uh, you know, system dot current time uh, millis. It's accurate, but uh, we need it to be even more accurate. So we're going to break it down into nanoseconds, which is a millionth of a second. Now we're going to create another long. We're going to call it timer, and this time we'll set it equal to system dot current time millis. And of course, that gets uh, the current time in milliseconds. Now we're going to create two doubles. I'm pretty sure I've explained what a double is before. So yeah, anyway. Our uh, first double we're going to be creating is called delta, and we're going to set it equal to zero. The second one uh, will be called ns, and uh, before we set it equal to something, uh, I'm just going to let you guys know that uh, Java, a lot of other, like a lot of other programming languages, can do math. So we can actually set our ns equal to let's say 1.2 plus 3.4, and now. Uh, make ns equal to 4.6 uh, we can uh, do 1.2 minus 3.4 and that pretty sure equals uh, to negative 2.2 uh, we can do 1.2 times uh, 3.4 uh, too stupid to know what that is in my head straight away but yeah we can do uh, 1.2 divided by 3.4 you know we can put things in brackets and that works so we can do uh, ns is equal to 1.2 divided by 3.4, then let's say plus 0.76. And uh, we can uh, use the square root, we can use uh, the power of, we can use pi, we can use like a sine, cosine, tangent. And uh, yeah, we yeah, Java can pretty much do math. And just letting you guys know because uh, this is very important. And uh, when you, if you're ever going to be a programmer in the future, you're going to be doing a lot of math, trust me. So, anyway, we're going to set ns equal to 1 billion, so that's uh, 1 and 9 zeros, divided by 60. Now we're going to create two integers. The first is going to be called frames, and we'll set that equal to 0. And the 
other one would be called ticks, and we're going to set that equal to zero. And if you haven't guessed already, frames and ticks uh, will count how many frames per second and updates per second we have. Now, uh, I'm just going to explain to you guys right now. If we try to use, let's say, uh, we tried to use last time uh, outside of our run method, and let's say we try to use it in our tick method, the thing is, it doesn't work because last time doesn't exist. Now, you might be thinking, what the hell, last time does exist, it's right here. Well, it exists, but only inside the run method. Uh, what, whatever variables we create inside method are only visible inside the method we created in. So, because like we created all these variables, all these variables will only exist inside of uh, our run method. If we try to use it outside of our run method, then that doesn't work. Uh, we can create a, like a, an integer inside of our render method, but it's only uh, existing in that render method. So if we try to use it, let's say, in our tick method, then we can't because it only exists inside the method we created in. So yeah, hope you guys understand that. Now, uh, in our while running loop, and uh, yeah, make sure all these variables are outside of well, before our while running while loop. And uh, in our while running loop, uh, we're going to uh, delete render and tick for now. Uh, we'll put it back eventually, but we're just going to delete it for now. Alright, and uh, in our while running loop, we're going to actually create another long. We're going to call it now, and we're going to set it equal to system.nanotime as well. System.nanotime, there we go. And uh, you know how I said, uh, you know, variables only exist inside the method we created in? Well, uh, that applies to loops and if statements as well. Then that variable only exists inside of that uh, loop. So if we try to use it outside of our uh, while running loop, then it doesn't work because it only exists inside of our while running, while running loop. Now, now the next line of code, uh, you know, I'll type it then, I'll explain it to you guys. So we're going to type delta plus equals, so uh, type a plus then an equals symbol, then in brackets, now minus last time divided by ns. And what this is pretty much doing, uh, Java is calculating the value of now minus last time, and then it's going to divide that by ns. And whenever that equals two, we're going to add it on to delta. And then after that line of code, we have to set last time equal to now. Now we're going to create another while loop inside of, inside of our while running loop. And uh, we're going to be checking while delta is greater than or equal to 1. So by the way, in if statements, we can check if uh, something is greater to another. Uh, we can check while delta is equal to 1, which is a uh, two equal symbols. We can check while delta is greater than 1, while delta is less than 1. Then uh, if we put an equal symbol after the less than symbol, then we're checking if a delta is less than or equal to 1. If we put a greater than symbol than an equal symbol, then we're checking if uh, delta is greater than or equal to 1. Alright, so we're going to be checking if delta is greater than or equal to 1 inside of this while loop. And inside of the while loop, we're going to call our tick method. Uh, we're going to type ticks plus plus. And what that pretty much does is that it's a pretty short way of uh, adding 1 to tick. So if we do tick minus minus, then uh, it's pretty much taking 1 away from tick. So yeah, typing ticks plus plus and ticks minus minus is just uh, a really short and efficient way of uh, incrementing tick or decrementing tick by 1 or any integer or variable. Then, uh, after ticks plus plus, we're going to type delta minus minus. And of course, this will take one away from delta every time this line of code is called. So yeah, after the while loop, uh, we're going to call the render method. Then uh, we'll type frames plus plus. So now we're going to make an if statement. We're going to be checking if system dot current time millis minus the value of timer is greater than a thousand. And this if statement will occur every second. Alright, so now 
Uh, we're going to type timer plus equals a thousand. So we're adding a thousand to timer, and this pretty much resets our timer. So uh, this if statement will keep getting called uh, every second. And uh, after that line of code, uh, we're going to print something out into the console. So we'll type system dot out dot print line, and in the brackets, we're going to type frames. So Java will print out the value of frames. Then we can type plus and then an actual string. So we can type frames plus FPS. And then we're also going to type another plus symbol. Then after that, I will type, it's going to print out ticks. And then uh, after that, I will print out TPS, which stands for ticks per second. Or you can do UPS if you're... Uh, calling ticks updates, but so uh, by typing this line of code uh, Every second something like this should be printed out in the console. So let's say I get 300 FPS Then I'll also uh, put a comma here Then I'll uh, we'll get Then our game will uh, run at an average of 60 ticks per second. So we'll type 60 TPS so uh, every second something like this should get printed out into the console Alright, now we need to set our frames and ticks equal to zero because uh, if we don't, uh, the value of our frames and ticks uh, integers will keep piling up and uh, like it will be equal to an amount so greater than it actually is. So we'll set frames equal to zero and ticks equal to zero. Alright, so now let's run our game and everything should work. Alright, and uh, there you go. As you can see, uh, every second in the console, uh, the amount of uh, ticks is being printed out into the console, as well as the amount of uh, frames per second. Now, uh, our frames per second is very high at the moment, but don't worry, uh, the next episode, it will be decreased a lot. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up this episode here. If you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If someone you know is interested in learning how to program a game in Java, please let them know about this channel. I would highly appreciate it. And if you have a Twitter account, please feel free to follow me on Twitter. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye.